So welcome to the April 21st uh, DEI, Chaos DEI workgroup meeting. Uh, the minutes are in the chat, so if you could add yourself, that would be awesome. A um, couple things here today that it would be great if we could get some feedback or just some thoughts on um, people. So I have been kind of as an action item from last week to kind of go work group by work group to take a look at particularly some of the older metrics that we have because uh, it actually some of them I think were actually released under the under an old template that hasn't been updated fully or as I mentioned last time you know sometimes you write something and it makes sense at the time and then you read it six months later and it doesn't make a ton of sense you know you get away from it a little bit you don't have the opportunity to talk your way through a narrative and so just reading the text is a little bit tricky so I have a couple of pull requests here um, that I've added for two of the metrics here in the DEI working group. So attendee demographics and one that we were talking about a little bit specifically last time was inclusive leadership. Hoping you could just kind of head over and take a look at some of the things that I was doing in that pull request. So some of them are just grammar items I can share my screen too. So for example, we had attendees demographic and I just think we always call it attendee demographics. So small, sometimes small things. Well, I can already see an error that I made of an event is probably not the <laughs> at an event, so I'll fix that. So one of the things that <clears throat> at least that I saw when I was going through this metric was with respect to attendee demographics or speaker demographics, um, we're often asking questions around um, gender identity or race, ethnic or race, ethnicity, disability. And this metric as it was seemed to have two things. One was asking questions around those particular items. Um, but it was also asking questions around um, things like asking attendees if they feel um, kind of what their DEI experience was at the conference, which to me is a little bit different than asking demographic questions. So I, I, left, there, I left them in here, but it, just for simplicity at the moment, but it, they feel like two different things to me. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think I remember, I remember when we worked on this, this metric, um, but I don't think I, I didn't really think about it at the time. And I think you're, I think you're right. I think, um, yeah, I'm not sure what we would call the other metric, but I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's part of the demographics. Okay. Um, Elizabeth, or although demographics, Matt. attendee demographics would be a filter on the other one because you'd want to know, like, if you if you surveyed people about you know how they felt about the yeah, DEI cool. at an event, being able to filter it on the attendee demographics would be interesting. That would. Do other people have thoughts on this? Matt, say your sorry. Say your um, original. Uh, question again. I was commenting on the one of the other changes that you made. So sorry, I missed your original question. So the original question was the current form of the attendee demographics metric kind of has what feels like two parts to me. One is asking attendees particular demographic questions. And then here in the data collection strategies, we were also asking people like, did the event meet your DEI expectations? You know, so to me, those feel yeah, like I different think things. I, I agree. And actually that kind of was the comment I was making above. Um, uh, kind, I, I made a, if you uh, scroll up um, to the top, I, I suggest, oh, it didn't show up there. Um, 
I don't know why, but I, I suggest maybe changing that, uh, how diverse and inclusive are the attendees of an event? Because an, an attendee itself isn't diverse or inclusive. Like we're referencing the body of attendees and then we're referencing the policies at the event or the experience right. uh, uh, around inclusivity. So I would just recommend changing that question because it, it just doesn't sit with me, I guess. Um, totally. And then to your, to, your, to your point, yeah, then I think they are separate things. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, I okay, cool. It sounds like we're getting some agreement here. Um, I'll recommend that I, I, I'll take a look at what you suggested, Elizabeth, but what you just described makes sense. And then pulling this out, the questions about DEI, like feelings about DEI from the attendees, perhaps into a different metric. Um, and Matt, would this help you on the badging too? Because then attendee demographics really just be, becomes about asking opt-in questions about demographics. That's it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, do you, is there a, a DNI demographics metric that we could just point to? Like keep this one as the, uh, the event this, or attendee thing and then just point at a, at a demographics metric that would uh, resolve this? Yeah, so in the, in the metric itself, there are a couple of questions that are pointed to that could be used for demographics, particularly around disability, gender identity, gender pronouns, and race, race ethnicity. And they are, they're here. You see that, this demographic data. A de demographic data is the metric? The metric is attendee demographics, but there's there is this link, this demographic link mm -hmm. can take you to a series of questions that could be asked. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So if we if we break out the um, the inclusivity part or the like, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. um, questions would it would, would it be uh, something like a, an experience metric, like yeah. attendee experience or something like that? Yeah, that'd be good. And it probably wouldn't be too hard to make that metric either. Just we have some of the questions I think are really good questions here in the data collection strategies. So we could probably reuse some of that stuff. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Okay, cool. I will. Um, okay, so make a note here. And then this, this involves creating another metric called demographics as well? Um, no, so we have attendee and speaker demographics. And I think Elizabeth had suggested like a new metric called um, event inclusiveness or something along those lines. I don't really remember. I said okay, so, experience, but that's, I like that okay. better actually. <laughs> so taking, taking this metric and turning it into event inclusiveness and then creating another metric that would be demographics? Nope, so we already have the attendee demographics metric right now. And so I think really just focusing the existing metric, which is attendee demographics, really just on asking questions about attendee demographics and then creating a new metric called, uh, I already forget what I called it. <laughs> Of inclusive inclusiveness or something like experience, that. Experience, yeah. yeah. So, is there is there value in having a metric that is just event demographics versus a broader metric that is just demographics? Are they would they be the same thing? Like speaker demographics and attendee demographics, or just having one metric yeah. called demographics is what you're saying? Yes, and then just and then you can point everything for events that are related to demographics at this demographics metric, or you could point it at 
if you're looking at the the project in general, you could point it at demographics that way. I, I think uh, there's a I think there's a little too much specificity in uh, in saying attendee demographics versus demographics because the it's going to basically be the same thing. So it'd be like a filter, then. No, versus... no, demographics would be a metric. It would just we remove right. it from we remove it from the focus area of just events, and and then you can you can point to your other metrics at it. So demo, demographics is not associated with events or projects. It's just demographics is a metric that is about demographics. And I can say to that point when we're doing the DEI badging work, the questions around attendee demographics are the same as around speaker demographics. And the way that I look at an event is also the same. Like I, I'm just, it's usually around registration is where demographic questions get asked. So to your point, Kevin, like we have two metrics that are basically doing, the, not even basically, they're doing the exact same thing at the moment, one is focused on attendees and one is focused on speakers, and there may not be any value in separating. And, the two. and at some point, we may do a project inclusivity or, or project diversity uh, metric where where we would need to be able to point at demographics again. Yeah, I think we kind of touch on this in um, project leadership. Like we ask, you know, how diverse is the project leadership or, or those in roles of influence? So, I mean, there is something to be said for having one central demographic metric and then it's, you know, whatever lens you want to look at it, like whatever segment of whatever you're looking at, you would apply that demographic. But I don't, I don't know if if the questions are all the same or if the data collection would be the same i don't i don't know but certainly a good a, an interesting idea i think it's a good idea i think the like the data collection are just strategies right so they're not uh, they're not completely linked to the metrics definition uh, the the metrics definition is probably the important part that could carry over and then collection strategies can be different based on the the context Can I make a suggestion that as a first step, maybe I could take speaker demographics, like event speaker demographics and event attendee demographics, and draw those together into a single metric called event demographics for the time being. And with maybe a longer horizon where we start thinking about demographics more broadly, like within a community, but this would, I think this would move us forward in the right direction, Kevin, without um, maybe going too far. How does, does that work for you? Oh yeah, yeah, that completely works for me. Cool. All right. All right, cool, thank you. Good conversation. Um, the next one that I took a look at was inclusive leadership. So it's the pull request 360. That's the one that I was thinking of actually. You were gonna what? I think that was the one I was thinking of actually with regard to- Oh, okay. How, how and you were just, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so I'll share my screen here. This one came up last time. This this one, this one kind of like this whole idea came when we were developing the health short stories. That's what I'm calling them now. <laughs> um, and I was trying to include some metrics, and I was reading this one, and really was problematic to me. So, so this metric, a little like uh, attendee demographics, was doing two things to me. We're kind of signaling two things. One was allowing communities to, and I put them in the objectives, allowing communities to reflect on their own leadership practices 
So how a community can think about inclusive leadership kind of within their project. But we didn't have that as an objective. What we had as our objective was to signal to external folks that this community is um, provides an opportunity to be successful and take on leadership roles within the community. Does that make sense? So it, to the start, it was the representation here was kind of this outward representation to newcomers. You see on the left there, signal to newcomers that everyone is welcome. But if I if you scroll down on the metric itself, um, it's it's really a lot about kind of actions that can be taken. This doesn't show it all, but like understanding inclusive leadership within your community. Let me back out here. Um, well, it's about understanding, it's about kind of reflecting, and it's about implementing. So how does a community kind of go through this process of asking themselves how they can improve inclusivity within leadership roles? So again, this metric was doing two things for me. I don't know if people have thoughts. So I can go all the way back out to nope. So here's the metric as it stands. I really like the change from um, specific examples of people who are leaders to more the broad definition of like people in this type of role uh, are, are is a leader, people with merge access. It's it's a lot more um, inclusive, I guess is the, good, is the best word for it. You're to say to say this something list here. yeah to say something other than specific roles that we would consider leaders. Yeah, I did, I did modify this a little bit just to think about different ways that people could be seen as leaders within the community. And then if you see here, the step one of understanding, step two, evaluating, and step three, taking action. Like to me, these are about us as a community, like, like what we would do to improve inclusivity, which is not really about how we signal to newcomers that they have an opportunity to, to do this. So they're seem, they, they seem to off again. So one option would be to simply just this objective, like it's not about, well, I mean, it still kind of is like I had rearranged it. So I said the objectives of this metric are to enable a project to reflect on inclusive leadership within the project and take action. I don't know if I said the take action part, but to kind of reflect. And then it seems like a, a natural kind of secondary product from that is that if we are a community that's actively reflecting on inclusive leadership, that's a good signal to others that they could join the community and take on, you know, feel confident in taking on roles of, of leadership. So it kind of seems like a, a secondary positive thing that could come of this. So that's why I flipped the order in the pull request. I'm either totally exciting you or <laughs> totally killing you. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> to an extreme on both ends. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with um, the way the question reads about um, 
we're asking how well is a project or community set up for diverse leadership, but then the metric is inclusive leadership. And I think those two things aren't quite the same. Um, and I, I'm not sure how to kind of reconcile that because I, I know that they're obviously related, but I don't know if if it me means that we need two separate metrics around them or if we just need to be a little more consistent in our language. I'm not sure. I'd like to hear what others think about that. I think that's a really good point. I mean, I I don't know if it needs to be two metrics, but I tend to think about I tend to think about the two very differently. Like I tend to think about inclusive as, you know, like you know, you're welcoming people, you're sponsoring people, you're pulling people into leadership positions from from diverse backgrounds. And then as a result, you end up with with diverse leadership as a part of that those inclusive activities. Um, but I'm not sure how to, yeah, I'm not sure how to write that into the metric. But I think that makes a good point, Elizabeth. Also, I have to drop at half past for another meeting. So when I disappear, okay. that's why. Okay. So Elizabeth, I would, you gave two options. One is to make another metric and one is to rewrite the question. I think rewriting the question is the, <laughs> the path that I would prefer. And I, I totally agree with you. And I totally agree with you too, Don. I do see them as two different things. And I do, I, I think um, we kind of confound these terms often in our metrics uh, to not to our benefit at all. Um, so, so I the inclusive leadership metric was one that I, I, I honestly think it was <clears throat> that Emma Irwin had brought forward when she was at Mozilla. So it would probably make sense to keep the title as it is and just rewrite the question as to how how we as a project um, could ensure that we're inclusive in community members or people wanting to take on leadership roles within the project. Does that last sentence that I say seem normal? Okay. And then I think to, to Don's point, I think a, a lot of these then, like the understand, these are the activities that a project can do, kind of the reflective things that a project can do to help ensure that people are included um, when it comes to considerations about leadership. So maybe I also, also find it, oh, oh, go ahead, mm -hmm, go ahead. I, I find it um, curious that we, we offer the steps. Uh, I, don't, I haven't seen that before in other metrics. I know I'm newish, but um, especially like the step three, um, I, it just seems different than, you this know what I mean? This is one of the first metrics that we defined, and this was way before we had templates. So I'm not surprised that this one looks pretty different than some of the others. And it might be worth, it might be worth retooling this one to fit, to be more consistent with how we tend to do metrics. Like lots of times, and we, we could retool it. Like even if you notice in references, we have a background section down here. That is not normal. Um, one of the things that we do oftentimes in implementation, you know, we have data collection strategies. We could say things like sample questions include, you know what I mean? And just kind of bring it together. We do that a lot. Like here's a sample survey item that you could use. Yeah. Here's a sample interview question that you could use. Here's some sample reflective questions that you could use so we could bring it together a little bit more. Yeah, so maybe it just needs tweaked a little on this, the headings. Maybe that would work. Sounds good. Okay. Personally, I do not like the um, step three now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> uh, I, I uh, so because we normally don't really, we provide suggestions but never necessarily that much guidance don is correct i mean this was one of the first metrics we put together and yeah i don't know if you remember matt or kevin you remember i think our first sets of metrics they had a tendency of being pretty like detailed and i think we've gotten away from that in a good way 
to just say, here's a metric, <laughs> here's something, here's how it can be defined, here's why it's useful, here are some ways that you can kind of explore this metric, end of story. So I think that's been better for us in moving forward. Okay, good to know. All right, so it sounds like take this section, the implementation section and like squish, <laughs> squish the section down, is that right? All right, cool. I will say for, for a lot of the DNI metrics, I think the implementation sections are larger because there's often not software associated with it. That's fair. Uh, yep. and the other the other working groups have the benefit of uh, easily uh, easily captured metrics through Augur and Grimoire Lab. Right. Oh, you're right. Because a lot of times we we just say like implementation. We just give a link to Grimoire Lab. <laughs> like go over there. <laughs> what and in fact. A lot of the early metrics, Kevin or Matt, do you remember this? In the implementation, we used to actually have like the steps that you would go through in a piece of software to implement the metric. Do you remember that? Yeah, we would do like the uh, the the Augur code, what what to put in the database, all that stuff. Yeah, and that quickly became not good. Cause yeah, I, re I remember we were putting SQL queries in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, we need to stop doing this. So, I mean, that is helpful. You know, not gonna lie, that is pretty helpful. But yeah. at the helpful speed at which, you... oh, go ahead. No, you're right. At the speed at which things were changing, like the query would become <laughs> instantly useless. All right, cool. Um, well, thank you. This is good. I think this is something that we should be doing in all of our working groups, just kind of continuing to reflect on our metrics. All right, um, next thing, I'm guessing this is Yash. You wanna talk about uh, yes. standard structure? Yes, uh, Matt, since you are sharing the screen already, could you click move on to the Google Doc? Thanks. Like, so, I noticed that each working group repository currently has a different structure for the readme. Some have the participate section at the top, some have their at, at the bottom, some provided POC, some don't. So I was hoping we could create a, you know, a uniform structure for each repository. So here's what I proposed. And any suggestions and feedbacks? That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to be silent for a second while I read it. So, yeah, sure. So I love it. <laughs> That's my, I, you know, any 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 way that we can standardize the structure is great. Um, I do the one, and it's not. I wonder about contributors probably the most, not for not for the structure that you provide, uh, but I just wonder out loud about us tracking contributors in a README file. It's the most dynamic part of the list that you have because i think things like intro participate contributing you know metrics will change a little bit but the rest of them are pretty stable components of a readme history history has shown us that we are very bad at keeping yes. contributor lists uh, so maybe the maintainers is probably worth capturing there but probably not contributors in general oh well, yeah there was initially an idea to put four contributors also but Thank you, Alcrim. Uh, so the, the contributing, rather than having each working group create a contributing section, I would link out to the uh, the handbook and create the, uh, the contributing section there if it's not already there. And I believe there is some stuff that's already there. 
And the same thing with the participate, I might link to the, uh, I might actually link to the website participate page because that's the, that's kind of the definitive place for that. I was hoping that the participate page could, you know, or describe the working group specific requirements, like what are the interests of the working groups and the fields it works upon. Uh, so you could put that in the introduction part. So yes. history, also history has shown that, that we've had people that have been um, wanting to contribute and go to the participate page on the website and they have um, trouble finding out how to participate from that page. So it might, we might just be able to provide some guidance that is working group specific on like what you can do to participate and then link out to the page if they have any other questions. Yeah, that's fair. I would say the uh, the issues with the participate page are not necessarily with people having trouble participating with the working groups. Uh, the primary issue is that they are trying to figure out how to participate with Augur and Grimoire Lab, and they're not getting the information they need there. Believe it or not, we've also had a couple of people show up to the badging meeting thinking it was the DEI meeting or something like that, just stumbles. Um, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. I'm a, I'm a little with Kevin that like right now we have our participate information, for example, on the DEI working group, we have that information on the participate page and we have that information in this document right here, right at the top. And if we have it in the readme too, it's just a third place that we have to track it a little bit that stuff gets uh becomes out of out of alignment pretty fast <laughs> when you have it in, in multiple places <laughs> yeah, that's true. it does and so the uh, best we can just point to kind of definitive guides the better actually maybe the maybe the uh the agenda document itself is the best place to point to this thing yeah that's totally fine. I mean, I, I, this is, I think this is pretty clear and I've standardized this across all of those, the documents now. So I think that's a pretty clear place to point. So, oh, so maybe that, so the participation section, maybe we point to, so in that section, we point to our agenda working group document, and then we can also point to the participate page, uh, which would have the, the full calendar of events. Right. Um, so as I see it, like we should remove the, who should join this working group part, uh, maybe add it to the introduction. Yeah, I think and, I'd, uh, I think that would fit. The who should join this working group fits fits great with the information that you have in the introduction. And the how to join this part can link to the website, I guess, or we can entirely remove that heading. Just like that, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Any other thoughts, suggestions? And then the same the same issue with, with contributing. So I think the for the working groups that we're standardizing the repos and the, the processes should be the same. So in this case, for contributing, I think you should point to the uh, point to the chaos handbook and then make sure that that all the contributing information is in the chaos handbook. Right. So the, the readme should be, should actually end up being fairly small, right? I come back here. It was, what was this for? Contributing, Kevin? How to contribute, yeah. <laughs> what do we click? <laughs> I am not sure. Uh, I am not saying that it exists currently here, but 
but ideally the the how to contribute should exist here. <laughs> okay. Maybe just add in another you know, page participator. Yeah, yeah, just right yeah. over here. And we could we could even add kind of the so I know that the the DCO stuff is in the uh, is the DCO stuff in the handbook or is that just in the governance repository in a different place? Either way, the the how to contribute should include discussion of the the DCO stuff because we we run into problems with DCO a lot uh, with mm -hmm. new contributors. Uh, and then we could we could probably also include some kind of very very high level uh, Git uh, directions, right? We have in each of the working groups, we have this page. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and, and I would say that page needs to be in the handbook and the same for each working group, uh, unless there's a very specific difference for the working group. Uh, and then, and we point to it in the readme. So we'd actually be able to remove contributing from the uh, working group repositories, and we're just capturing that contributing document in the governance repo and the handbook. So remove all contributing MD from repos. This would be yep. the goal. Yep, and, and standardize. Simply include that info in the handbook. Yeah. Yeah, so any, any document that needs to be recreated across working groups like uh, the license or the uh, contributing or the uh, code of conduct, those things should all be kept in a central repository and we just point to them. So they're yep. just being changed in one place. That, that would be the, uh, the idea. I like it. Just as a point of reference, we do mention that every commits need to be signed off um, in the handbook, but we don't actually go into it, how to do it in the handbook where, itself. Where is that? Here I can drop it. So I think there's the I chat. think there's some documentation in the governance repo itself as well that is more explicit. Uh, but every time every time I need to give someone someone directions on that, I do actually have to go and search for that document. Because <laughs> I'm I'm not exactly sure where it's at. To me the handbook makes hundred percent the most sense. And yeah. maybe Contributing approach. This is under community handbook. Contributing. How do if you there, that? if there is any duplication in the handbook, it should probably be a file that's created within the governance repo, where the handbook is just pulling it from the governance repo. Uh, contributing. How did you even find this document? Because I'm amazing. Hello. That is amazing. There's I don't know how did, did you it seems like you stumbled upon it. Like I don't see anything. Uh, I, well, I knew there was a contributing section, but I did not remember if we like spelled out the different steps of the the, the DCO stuff. How did you even get to the contributing? Like the slash contributing? Oh, I just went to the main. Um, main link here, and it's on the table of contents on the left. So I can drop. Yeah, I think you can name. scroll where you were on the table of contents, right? You can scroll down from there and get more mm -hmm. like DMI badging and mentorships and stuff like that. Oh, I yeah, see. it's on the left. How to control? It's way. Yeah, it's down a little. Yeah. Okay. We could probably use a little attention on the handbook as well. So, did a re they did a really nice job putting it together, but uh, it probably needs a. Uh, some tweaking Green. and yeah. optimizing, right? No, Josh Kerr did a great job. I mean, it's amazing. So, okay. 
Cool. Maybe we should link it a little more in the website, make, give it a little more visibility or something like on the participate page, something like that. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Uh, and as part of, as part of the standardization, the, the website repo itself will use this, this same structure to, to point to it once, uh, once we have, once we have a structure to point to. So, but, but yeah, you're right. I, uh, I should definitely add a, uh, add that information to the participate page. We're done. Yash, is this helpful? Uh, yeah, that, this was great. Like from what I see, we can just keep the contributing session in the readme to a minimum and basically redirect it to the community handbook page. Yeah, yeah that's think, all Ke the contributing section should have. I think Kevin's point um, like, is well taken. Anytime we have a repeating document in any working group, let's take that document and get it into the community handbook and point there. And regarding uh, the contributor section, only maintainers, mm -hmm. any thoughts? Further thoughts, like, do we want to include that page and in uh, include that section in the readme? Well, so I let me take a look here. Um, so if, if I look at you're saying ahead, maintainer uh, contact information. Oh uh, yeah, basically a link to the maintainer's GitHub profile. So I would think that would need to be there. So if you need to, if you're at the working group you may want to contact a uh, maintainer. So a, a clear clear idea of who the maintainers are is probably important. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, on that readme page, we could you could link out to the metrics release page as well to show the, like these are the metrics released by this working group. Uh, and then additionally on that metrics release page, there is a contributor list. So we could point to that contributor list as well. If we wanted to make sure that people were uh, being uh, identified. So, but as far as I know, that's the only place we're capturing contrib a contributor list. Oh, Kevin, can you put these suggestions down as comments? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, and I navigated away from that page. I would just put it down in challenge. Uh, so any guesses as to who is a maintainer on the DNI repository? Right now, uh, I know Georg is, uh -huh. and I believe you are. Uh, by default, because you're uh, an org, an org maintainer. An org, yep. So all of the so all of the org maintainers. So probably uh, uh, otherwise, Nicole, Nicole Houston, is she? Uh, no, it's Emma, Emma, da Daniel, um, Don, Georg, Matt Snell. You are on the DNI repository. Uh huh. I, I'm a core contributor. Yep, and you were an admin, and then Justin Flory is also a maintainer. It, notwithstanding the org admin stuff that you were pointing out, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Te I, technically, I'm an org admin, so I would be an, uh, a maintainer there as well. However, I do not consider myself a, a DNI maintainer. We should probably adjust that. <laughs> What's that? I just was saying we should probably adjust our list of maintainers because I don't know that. I mean, Don's the only one really that shows up to these meetings anymore. So there's. And if I go to chaos, member privileges. Uh, I never remember where, how do I see team? Maybe I forget. Anyway, I just, I guess the, the maintain, maintainer lists are weird. That's all sometimes. Yes, we are at time. Thank you, Matt. 
Maybe we just add, maybe we just have like two people that are the contact people. I like that better. Uh, so to contact these two people for whatever you need. For questions, yes, right? exactly. And, I like that better. Uh, and that's easier to, uh, that can rotate too, right? We can swap, we can swap those people out. At, uh, right, and then we don't have to keep it totally parallel with the official maintainer title yeah. in GitHub. Yep, I like that. All right, cool. Well, we are at the end of time. Everybody, thank, thank you so you. much for coming. Thank Josh, you. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for the feedback. And until next time, everybody. Thank you. See you later. Bye. See you later. Take See care. Ya.